This obviously is a hugely important question to Calgarians. Whether you work in the oil and gas sector, it absolutely touches your life in, in more ways than one as a resident of Calgary Centre. And it would not be possible, I don't think, to be a credible voice for Calgary Centre if I could not speak credibly and, and, and indeed optimistically about what I can do for the oil and gas sector. So to begin with, I think what we're seeing right now in Ottawa is a lot of cheerleading, but not a lot of actual leadership. And one of the problems with cheerleaders is they don't actually change their chance even when they're losing. And I think what's happened in the oil and gas sector actually is that we've started to lose the conversation and have not recognized how badly we've done so. You know, uh, you know, right now there's a lot of firefighting, there's a lot of PR sort of stuff, but really the industry does not have the kind of regula regulatory certainty and clarity as to what the rules are and what the national interest is that it needs to thrive. You talk to folks who work in the oil and gas sector and they will tell you, you know, every single project now is under such scrutiny. There's really been a breakdown in the public trust in the industry, and this is not the industry's fault. I know there are great people working in that industry who are just as concerned as I am about environmental stewardship and sustainability and getting it right. But what they need is a partner in Ottawa that can credibly bring everyone to the table, all the different interests, you know. There's interprovincial interests, so there's First Nations interests, there's obviously environmental concerns that need to be addressed. We need to get the whole country back at, at one table, and I think one of the greatest ways to do this, to begin that new conversation, would be to send a Green MP from Calgary who would have credibility on both sides of the aisle, who would be able to speak. You know, as a, as a, as a writer and speaker, I've spoken to the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers. I've also talked to Green Calgary. I've talked to Friends of First Key, Fish Creek Park. I've talked to, you know, the Alberta Institute of Agrologists, which is all uh, oil and gas guys. And I find that when you're talking about that sort of collective vision of where we need to go, you can get everyone onto the same page. And that's where we need to begin that conversation. We know this industry is going to be vital. It provides a vital resource that we know we are going to need for the foreseeable future. We have to do it in a sustainable way, and we have to do it in a way that earns the public trust here and abroad. We know the industry also is going to, be, is going to need to reach new markets. But I don't think we do that in the same sort of headlong charging way we have been, where you know the focus was all on getting oil to the U.S. Let's get it to the U.S. Let's get it to the U.S. Looks like the U.S. might not need it as much as we thought or wanted as much as we thought. Okay, now we've got to get it to China. How do we get it to China? What we really need to be doing is looking at all of the options. What are our choices in terms of opening up those new markets? Maybe more than one option makes sense. But at the very least, there is not you know, a federal government industry tax joint task force report or anything like that kind of clarity that we can point to and say, you know what, we looked at all the options and here's what works. Right now, we're really kind of making it up as we go along, and I don't think that helps the industry.